It is just a huge honor today to be sitting in the podcast interview with two doctors. We have a doctor of law. We have Elliot Ambridge. And we have Dr. Marina Ambridge, who is probably one of the most up-and-coming uh, best people in cosmetic dentistry. And I'm honored. I, I practice in Phoenix. You're next door in Peoria, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, just how, how long did it take you to drive here? 30 minutes. And when you left Peoria and entered Phoenix, did you have to, like, pull out your Glock or get a weapon? <laughs> I know uh, I know. when people come down to the studio, if they have to leave Scottsdale or Paradise Valley, they're like, really? I have to drive to Phoenix? Uh, can I have a bodyguard? Uh, Dr. Marina Ambridge is a general dentist in Peoria, Arizona, whose practice offers cosmetic, orthodontic, and implant dentistry. Dr. Ambridge is also currently a lecturer at the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry and a co-founder of Emotion Orthodontic and Cosmetic cosmetic dental courses together with the current president elect of AACD Dr. Salvatore Latardo did I say that right yes okay Latardo Dr. Ambridge is a recipient of multiple awards such as Alpha Omega best overall achievement in all four years of dental school award uh, top dentist in Peoria Arizona award top doc award and world's top dentist 2019 award uh, from leading physicians of the world organization Dr. Ambridge has also selected as, as a feature dentist by AGD Impact Magazine and has been featured on NBC Radio she is a former professional model uh, she is also also um, a professional photographer. She actually prints creative photos of her patients on canvas and showcasts them on the wall of her dental practitioner. Uh, she also is an avid traveler. She's visited more than 48 countries. And you're a painter. Uh, that is uh, amazing. Um, so wow. <laughs> um, so um, tell us about your journey. Um, uh, um, i got to tell you the truth about the ACD. Um when I came out here, um, there was another guy in our class um, from UMKC, Steve Hayes, and he went to Scottsdale, and he loved cosmetics and all that kind of stuff. And I, uh, I, I just, I just thought that would be the worst, having some pretty girl come in and my tooth's crooked, and I want lighter, and I was like, ah, I want someone with a toothache, yeah. and I want to pull that tooth. I, I think that's the most fun. And then after that, it'd be saving that with a root canal but man like if you came in my office i mean uh you know a pretty girl you model and you're like telling me all these things you want your front mm-hmm. tooth I, i'd i'd quit i'd just yeah. go wash dishes at the ihop yeah yeah see i'm well, the opposite because <laughs> where, where where, that's a very competitive yeah. i mean everybody wants an easy laid-back mellow patient yeah and the people that go to the aacd folks they're, they're none of that. They're they're yeah. high demanding, and usually what it is, it's always some fifty year old lady that just got divorced, and she's mm-hmm. on the 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 uh, the rebound, so she wants her uh, you know her cosmetic stuff, and because she wants to look like she just graduated from high school again, and it's just not right, going to happen. Right. So so how are you attracted to that <laughs> complex crazy patient? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess I feel like I understand them a little bit. Maybe I'm that kind of patient. (laughs) Um, But, you know, when early in my dental journey, uh, as soon as I graduated from dental school, I went to the AACD meeting. They were, it was held in Toronto. That's where I lived. And I was just so blown away by the dentistry there. So you were, you know, you were scared off of it, but I was really inspired. Um, And just seeing all that dentistry, I was thinking, you know, I want to be like these people there. And so I, you know, worked on myself trying to learn and doing continuing education. But um, when I first graduated from dental school, the type of practices that I worked in were not very uh, cosmetically inclined. So one of the early offices that I worked in, they only had one shade of composite and it matched nobody's teeth, right? So, <laughs> you know, how, what kind of cosmetic dentistry can you do with that? So you know, all really early, I was always thinking about how can I do more of that kind of dentistry that really did inspire me. And um, I started going into a lot of orthodontics. I took a lot of orthodontic continuing education as well. I think orthodontics has a lot of the principles of cosmetic dentistry. You know, you're thinking about smile design, how you're going to fit the teeth and the patient's face. And that was um, really interesting to me. And, you know, now that I have my own office and I can you know, do the dentistry that I want to do more freely, I realize how important orthodontics is for restorative cases. 
because it really you know makes those cases easier and you can please that 50 year old better right if you can you know what what, what scare what scares me is the um what scares me is the um the person who doesn't get all the AACD training and mm-hmm. like like inst- they, they don't know ortho, so someone yeah. will come in with a bunch of crowded teeth and they'll just they'll just crown you know ten teeth in a row. And on the lowers, mm-hmm. after they get them prepping the crowded tooth, it looks like a rice seed. Yeah, it's terrible. It's it's like terrible. Um, but you know, if I want to go <laughs> learn endo, I mean, you're in Peoria, the greatest endodontist in the world is right up the street from mm-hmm. you, Brad Gettleman. Um, you know, the, I, I can go uh, watch periodontists. I can go watch oral surgeons. I can go watch endodontists right here in town and learn the greatest. But but orthodontic education, if you're an orthodontist and you start teaching non-orthodontist continuing mm-hmm. education, you're dead. Yeah. I, I mean, they, they you're blackballed. So you're, we're down to, we got Richard Litt, who was the chairman at uh, University of California, San Francisco and Detroit. He teaches general dentists, and he's been blackballed from the entire orthodontist society. And the other ones in our backyard, Harry Green, mm-hmm. another board-certified orthodontist. And those two guys tell everybody in ortho, well, you know, if you want to teach the general dentist, you know, you won't have one friend in the orthodontic community. Is that still a thing? Or you're from Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, is it? Um, was it different there? Or how do you learn ortho? When for some uh, yeah. reason the orthodontists don't want to, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's necessarily that different. Um, I think, I guess, for whatever reason, they do not, you know, want general dentists. To, do, do you agree to with do that assessment? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is dentistry uncensored, and and the orthodontist they 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 don't want to do it. So so when so when someone wants to be you when they grow up, you know, she's mm-hmm. young, she's in dental school, and she says, "When I grow up, I want to be just like Marina." And not be like Howard. Uh, where would she learn ortho? Uh, I went to uh, progressive orthodontic seminars, and that they have a very comprehensive course on orthodontics. So if you want to do, you know, comprehensive uh, orthodontics, I think that's a good starting point. So what, what um, do they do? Richard do they Litt bring has in... a course as well. Yeah, yeah. Richard Litt is amazing. So does Progressive Orthodontics, um, do they bring in orthodontists in from other countries? Usually those they, companies have so to find have, them in I Australia. So they have, I think they mostly they're general dentists who just went through their program and, um, you know, do a lot of ortho. They're essentially orthodontists without the, the degree. Um, I think they have some orthodontists maybe from other countries that, you know, got retrained in the U.S., so is but, that website academygportho.com? Um, I think it's it's POS. Oh, P O P. So what is um seminars? P O O Progressive Orthodontic Seminars. Yeah. Okay, so that would be your your recommendation. Yeah, I would I would have a look at that. There's a couple. The Academy of GP Ortho. You know, there's another option there. Well, it keeps coming up to um, Progressive Ortho. So their website is uh, SmileStream. Yeah. Oh, that is their website. I think. so. Okay, so they must have got a new website. Uh, was, so, so you'd recommend uh, Richard Litt and uh, POS. Yeah. So, so that I, I think that's um, because when I was in school, you know, you talk about um, one shade of composite. When I was in school, it was amalgam. That was right. the only shade. Yeah, at least and now the crowns. The, the new thing was porcelain fused to metal, and um, and then um, um, it's really changed. But when it first came out, I, I have to tell you the truth. Another thing I didn't like the cosmetics is that. The amalgam was is it was metal mm-hmm. and is replaced by a plastic. Yeah. Uh, the metal, um, you know, we're in biology. We're all going to get eaten by bugs and viruses and fungi, and it was half mercury. Bugs just hate eating mercury, mm-hmm. and the other half was silver, zinc, copper, and tin. So it lasted forever, yeah. even in this crazy environment. And then we replace it with this inert plastic yeah. that you know bugs weren't repelled. So everybody called it the aesthetic health compromise. Mm-hmm. And the holy grail is still to try to make a tooth colored filling that has some active ingredient, something, you know, some, some type of bug killer, weed killer, something for termites or ants uh, to make it last longer. Um, but do you, do you still feel um, it's an aesthetic health compromise? I mean, like if I um, imagine I went into you and I said, uh, I am short, fat, bald, I'm ugly. Um, I make my teeth perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got 10 veneers. Well, you're filing teeth, you're doing veneers. Does that, um, do you think that's a compromise or do you think uh, not so much as it was 10, 20 years ago? So definitely not so much as it was before. You know, if, you know, let's say you have worn teeth, you don't necessarily have to file them down. You've already 
done that yourself, you know, <laughs> by grinding your teeth. So you can get veneers that are more minimally invasive, you know, just more do an additive wax up and then, uh, you know, use that as your guide. So when, you know, you have a patient that's whose teeth have been through, you know, a lot of wear and tear, they don't necessarily have to grind their teeth so much to get the, you're just building them up to what they were, right? I got, I got to tell you the funniest thing, though. Um, so a friend of mine is the late Bob Ibsen, um, mm -hmm. the founder of Denmat and the founder of Rembrandt, and uh, he passed away. He was on show 193. I've had five guests that are no longer with us, just, just a classic, mm -hmm. um, like him and Carl Misch. And uh, Bob Ibsen used to say, to be conservative, he did no prep veneers. And I remember these dentists would always say, well, you can't. It's not going to look right if you don't yep. prep. You got to prep, got to prep, got to prep. And Bob would just laugh and say, what about this girl looks normal? She's got red lipstick on. She's got a wig mm -hmm. on. She's got fake boobs. She's got fake everything. Um, mm -hmm. He would always laugh that 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 beauty. Um, it, everyone knows it's not real. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. knows when you see someone really hot on TV, they probably got Botox surgery, mm -hmm. um, you know, silicone things like that. So my my question is, um, is is beauty? Um, still need to be natural. Like people are wondering, is that all you, or do people just know? Come on, your lips couldn't be that red without lipstick. You, mm -hmm. I mean, um, blush even comes from the word blood rush. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you blush, um, um, do do you think there's a um, strive for make it look natural, or mm -hmm. is fake fine? I mean, just to go out there, and it I probably think, depends on the country. I think, um, I mean, personally, I think that fake is is good as long as it doesn't look fake you know you i think you should probably you know there's a lot of available uh things on the market like you know the botox and i think it's great to use that if it's going to enhance you a little bit as long as you don't look ridiculous so um you know not everyone wins the genetic lottery and is born with perfect everything <laughs> so i don't think there's any there should be any stigma to get a little bit of enhancement I think you should just be careful when you're doing the enhancement that you don't want to look ridiculous, basically. You know, even, you know, with lipstick or with fake boobs, you know, you want it to look kind of real. Yeah. And by the way, these are real. They are. They're real. Who's <laughs> your have, surgeon? <laughs> but, you, and, but you know what? I just um, learned so much. You know, you don't, I, I still think the greatest education I've uh, ever did with my four boys, they say it all the time, is taking around these countries. I mean, you've been to how many countries, you say? 40 something yeah, yeah. and my, my boys um they still i mean they're like 24 26 28 30 they still say the, the the greatest things they learned was seeing all these countries and it's not until you go to a country where you really see the ins and out but um i remember when they're that you know in the 80s and 90s when you go to europe they would giggle about how how, how white americans want their teeth and the europeans are like yeah i think guys. they still giggle about that yeah you still giggle about that. but it wasn't until the, there's someone that wants them whiter and it's the middle east and it's because if you're a woman and you're all covered up mm -hmm. and the only thing you're showing is your your, right. your teeth holy and especially against all black yeah nobody wants whiter teeth than in saudi yeah uh, i mean they, they just um um, so, uh, they imagine got the money for it. So. Yeah. They got the money. I mean, yeah. I, I would set up a whitening bleaching, uh, veneer clinic yeah. in a uh, UAE. Let's uh, team up and do it. Yeah. Open a new business. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. If that's all that shows yeah. you, you got to really make it, uh, uh yeah. nicer. Um, so in dental school, um, Everyone, everyone graduates, they always have the same complaint. Yeah. Nah, we only did, you know, one wear canal, one implant. We didn't do that. Uh, you know, and, and I, I don't listen to the whining because I would never want to be responsible for 100 kids off the street and four years later turn them loose in Phoenix. I, so mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it, it's such a deal. But, but now she's out. And, and I tell them when they get out, I said, look, you need to learn. You know, if you're going to play football, you need to learn how to block, tackle, throw a pass, catch a ball. You know, go work on simple endo, a crown, a filling, your people skills, you know, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. But now she's been out two or three or four years, and she's decided she wants to be like you when she grows up. And you started uh, teaching with these emotion dental courses. Mm -hmm. um, where, where did that come along on your journey? How do you go from uh, marrying a lawyer, having a baby, <laughs> and deciding you want to start emotion dental courses? Mm -hmm. So we started this course with uh, Dr. Salatardo from the AACD, and I've known him for a couple of years through the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. And what this course is about is about 
marrying orthodontics. So just simple orthodontic tricks that can make your aesthetic dentistry, your restorative dentistry become really easy and very predictable. What type of tricks? Did you say orthodontic? Yeah, orthodontic tricks. So, th so these, so your these courses of um, that you're doing with Salvatore Latardo um, is mostly orthodontic. Yes, it's orthodontics, basic orthodontics for restorative dentistry. And you know, we talked about progressive orthodontic seminars and major ortho courses, but you know, it's fair to say that maybe not everyone knows that they want to invest you know, two years of their life into ortho continuing education, take something so big. So this is something where you can do very simple kind of cases where they really help your restorative dentistry. Um, looking at his picture, that has yeah. to be the most handsome man I've ever seen. <laughs> I'll tell a, him you said that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, is he naturally bald or did he shave that? Is, is I, he, I, I'll ask him. Is he a wannabe <laughs> fake baldy? Because a lot of those guys. I know. They tell. look at you and they're. Yeah, they look know. at me and they start shaving their head and I'm like, dude, I know you shave. You're not all natural. Um, so, um, so. Um, it's more like short-term ortho because that's a term. Exactly. You, you got six-month aligners. Yeah. You got short-term ortho. What what do what what are you calling that type? So of ortho? it is yeah exactly. So short-term limited ortho for uh, restorative cases. So let's say you have um, a patient that wants a full mouth of veneers or you know crowns, and they've got a lot of wear on their teeth. Right. So let's say you're not going to do orthodontics and then to get the gingival levels to line up really nicely for that divorced 50 year old, you're going to be doing a bunch of crown lengthening and then you're also going to be shaving down the teeth. Right. Because they've super erupted. But if you do a bit of ortho, you can intrude those teeth, get the gingival levels lined up and the patient has already done the incisal reduction for you. So then you can get really nice uh, veneers on there that would be very minimally prepped very cons uh, conservative of the tooth structure, right? So that's, you know, one um, example of something that you would learn. The other thing is, you know, for implants, right? Um, so for implants, you know, if the patient's been missing that tooth for a while, a lot of the teeth tend to tip into that space. Um, the roots may be in the space of where you want to put your implants. So you got to get those roots out of the way, right? What if you have a tooth that's periodontally compromised and needs to come out for perio? If you take it out, it's very unpredictable to try to graft that, right? But if you do that, you can extrude that tooth slowly with orthodontics. And then as you do that, it's going to grow some bone. So then you can do that. And then you're going to have lots of bone to put an implant. It's going to be a slam dunk, right? So that's another uh, type of thing that you would learn taking this course. Um, also for Invisalign, let's say you're doing aligners, you're doing or Invisalign, uh, and lots of, you know, you can get complications like posterior open bites or tracking issues and putting in braces for the patient for, you know, just, you know, a few months that can save your case rather than you know, returning the money to the patient, sending to them to the orthodontist. So that's another very helpful thing that you can do. When you're into um, short term ortho, mm -hmm. um, all the patents expired on these clear liner trays, mm -hmm. and now I've tracked 40 different clear liner companies yeah. around the world. It, it's turning out like the big three are going to be uh, Invisalign, uh, 3M Oral Care, the Unitec Clarity Liners, uh, uh, the Big Purple Smile Direct Club. Um, Henry Shine's got the um, got one out. Yeah. Um, are you clear liner? Uh, are you agnostic, or do you like a particular brand? Um, I mean, I like the brands that are dentist directed. So, I mean, not, you know, Smile Direct Club or something like that. But I think that if you know what you're doing with the clear aligners, you don't have to use Invisalign. You can use, you know, Clear Correct or I think uh, Serona has one. And everybody has everyone one. Everyone has one. So you can In even fact, print your own. Let you me know? check my pockets. Yeah. I think, uh... <laughs> or use the Ferran <laughs> clear aligner system, right? There's 400 implant companies now registered exactly. at the Cologne meeting yeah. and there's over 40 clear aligners. So, yeah. so it, so to a young kid who doesn't want to, um, um, go through 400 implant companies and four yeah. 40 aligner companies, what advice would you give them on picking an implant and a clear aligner? I would, it doesn't really matter which clear aligner company you're going to do. It does, you don't have to use Invisalign. Um, you can use ClearCorrect or anything else. You can print your own. 
Blue Sky Bio has a clear liner planning software, and then you can send it to your own printer. So it doesn't really matter what old system you're going to use as long as you know what you're doing. So you can't just, you know, take Invisalign fundamentals necessarily and, you know, be taught how to order on the website and just send it and have someone else plan the case for you. You need to know what you're doing and take the necessary continuing education. That's you know, what I think. So you're saying no matter what clubs Tiger Woods is using, he's going to beat me in golf? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> do you always bring your lawyer with you to, I do. Uh, to podcast? <laughs> Has she broken any laws yet? No, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was kind of interesting conversation. I called him a doctor when he walked in. And he said, um, you know, he's not a doctor. But, you know, I think it's a, been a real disservice um, news media is um, equating doctors with physicians because mm-hmm. it gets so frustrating when you, I would see like the uh, Federal Reserve Chairman um, Bernanke who had a PhD from MIT. None of the journalists and, and those uh, Fox News um, could have even got accepted into uh, MIT. And his thesis was on the Great Depression. And they, they, they're just calling him uh, Mr. Bernanke. And then they're, they're saying what they disagree. And it's like, dude... You only have a high school diploma, and you're and so this this whole doctor being with a physician is so mm-hmm. dumb because in the era of fake news, if someone's talking about the history of Belarus, I, I I'd kind of like to know they had a PhD in history from you know yeah. uh, this just, just because it's your snowflake opinion, I I don't really care. And in the age of Google, when you're sitting there watching a national program and you can Google something every five minutes, it's incorrect, you know, and it's like um, okay, but um. Um, so when you look at coming from the doctor of law to the doctor of dentistry, um, that's two pretty diverse doctorates. So which one of us made the better decision, uh, me and your wife or you? <laughs> <laughs> and decision in what? Um, Going to make a doctor, doctor of law or a doctor dentistry of dentistry? Or law. <laughs> I think doctor of dentistry is much better actually right now uh, because uh, I actually had a conversation with my grandma once and she always tries to support me and saying that, uh, you know, legal profession is great. You have made a right choice. And then uh, I actually asked her, well, how many lawyers have you dealt with throughout your life? And she couldn't name one. Right. And then I asked her, how many dentists have you seen throughout your life? And she could name a whole bunch. So that's why the profession of law is different from dentistry, because lawyers are considered last. You know, when everything is burned down, maybe you're going to go to a lawyer or maybe you still won't go to a lawyer. Right. But when something hurts or when you want something to be to look really great, you go to a dentist. Right? There's really no other profession that can help you. Yes, now there's Smile Direct Club, too, if you don't want to go to the dentist. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes they want to sidestep that. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what yeah. percent of Americans will ever use a lawyer in their lifetime? Have you ever heard a stat on that? No. no. Um, because like, um, it is true. Like A couple of my really good friends are chiropractors, and only 5% of Americans go to the chiropractor. But most of the research you see on humans... If you live a full life, you'll you'll have seen a dentist. Mm-hmm. So everybody's got a tooth. Even if you don't have any teeth, you still got to go to a dentist. And um, but not everybody needs a lawyer. Not everybody needs a chiropractor. But that's it's, I never thought of that in the um, legal profession. Um, so do you um, back back to the orthodontist deal? Um, mm-hmm. Do do you do um, do you only do clear aligners or do you do band and brackets? I do everything. So do you do all your ortho? I do a lot of it, yeah. Like, like what percent of your ortho would you say you do? Ninety percent. So, is that because you like it? It's because challenge- I love it. Yeah. Because you love it. Yeah, I love it. And 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 um, when you talk about ortho and implants, those are two things that don't get together. It's it's my um, understanding the human nature when I meet someone, they're either like me, they're like blood and guts. When they do a root yeah. canal, they're apical barbarians and want to puff a sealer at the end, <laughs> or you didn't even do it right. Um, you just love stuff like that, or yeah. you don't, yeah. and you like bleaching, bonding, veneers, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. I don't really know anybody who likes um, pretty soft and fluffy bleaching, bonding veneers, and blood and guts. Yeah. Do you do you like one or the other or both? I mean, I think I'm. I always saw myself as more of a bleaching, bonding veneers kind oh, of person. A bleaching, bonding veneer. But you know, then I, you know, I tried some surgery, and it does give me an adrenaline rush, and it's fun. So. I like that as well, but, you know, if I had to choose one, you know, yeah, I'm more about, you know, I like the artistry that really inspires me. I think I like the instant gratification of blood mm-hmm. and guts. I mean, they, they, 
I mean, I, I just yeah. get, I'm, I'm sure a fireman gets excited when he pulls up and he of sees course. a house on fire or you're a policeman running down the street and you see mm-hmm. the bad guy running with their purse. You know, you're like, I can get that guy. And man, when they come in, when they're holding their face or they're drinking something cold to keep the pain down um, and then, and then, you know, then you, you, you remove it and it's done. Whereas, like, an ortho case, I mean, come yeah. on, it's two years. Yeah. It's like, you know. Um, I, I, I love the planning, you know. I like the planning, you know, and then seeing my plan come to fruition, you know, that excites me. And are you, is this all planning on digital? Digital software? Uh, Yeah, and, you know, just using traditional methods as well. Yeah. It, well, people are always talking about the, um, the digital revolution, the mm-hmm. digital smile makeover all these digital 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 um what do you think are the fundamental requirements of digital i mean um i I personally think um you know when people ask me do they need a cbct or do they need a laser or they need chair side milling cam cam i tell them what you need is a damn camera Mm -hmm. because what i have seen especially from a lot of people have done this uh, podcast where uh, some guy will come on he'll talk about implants and then you know the uh, the show's four years old and they'll say god dang the following year i had four different people fly from another city to come me do their implants but but they they go on a website and they're like um you know i'd like to get veneers i'd like to i'd like to replace this and you go there and they're, they're just, it's like a stock photo there's nothing mm-hmm. but the but the people who take pictures and load them up onto the website and say this is my work done right here in phoenix arizona holy moly that's i, I think that's the most valuable piece of equipment do you agree or disagree the camera? absolutely i mean i think and it's a lot easier to implement than you know if you're getting an intraoral scanner or any other pieces of digital equipment that you would need uh, but a camera, I think it's important whether you're digital or analog. I don't think you can do dentistry or at least interior dentistry without a camera anymore. Are you digital or analog? We're in the process of converting more to digital. So we have a lot of things that are digital and we're still buying more equipment. But I think the the camera is absolutely critical whether you're doing it digitally or an analog. I don't think you can really communicate the shade any other way to your technician. Yeah. And, or, and, and, um, but I noticed um, you're, you're, ta- you're a doctor, so you're talking about communicating your technician. Yeah. But I was talking about sales. I know doctors oh, yeah, don't like sales. about sales. Yeah, sales. Pay, I mean, they just don't. Doctors just don't like sales. They, they mm-hmm. can't even say the word. Can you say the word sales? I can say the word sales. <laughs> <laughs> I taught her that how to you do it. You taught her how to do it. But, but it's like, um, so uh, this is a way too personal of a case, and I, I shouldn't share it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it because it's just kind of weird, but... Um, a very close friend of mine wanted, uh, right here in this town, wanted uh, breast augmentation, and she had she uh, had kids and all that kind of stuff. And and um, uh, she told me if I had a recommendation, I said no. I, I work with dentists. I you know I, I work with some uh, uh, rheumatologists, diabetes, but n- no one in plastic. And um, and but anyway, but then, then she called me out and she got mad at me. She said, uh, "Hey, when I needed you, blah blah." She goes, uh, "I I want you to get involved with this decision because it's really stressed me out." So she went to two places. So I went back with her to, to follow up. And you're right. You walk in there. The guy has no pictures of his work. He's got brown carpet. Mm-hmm. You're sitting on there. And he had me a brochure. And it was made from the American Association of what Plastic Surgery or whatever the hell. And I thought, my God, I wouldn't let this guy touch me. So after I went back to the two with him, because she wanted me to go back to follow-up questions, I just said, no, I don't trust this. So then I came back, and I thought, and I thought, and I thought, well, who would know this more than anything? Well, where's the biggest strip club in Phoenix, Arizona? And I don't say it out loud. You're not supposed to know. So I called up, um, I called up Bourbon Street, and I uh, mm-hmm. asked the manager. And then they thought something's illegal, something's wrong. The lawyer's the police, and I'm like, no, I'm a dentist in Phoenix. <laughs> and the guy gets on the phone, so I told him my dilemma, and he goes, look, he goes, um, everybody gets them done the first time on price, and then everybody goes and has uh, Lawrence Shaw redo it for twice the price. Uh, who doesn't take your insurance, who only wants a cashier check. So I went over there, and we went over, and we saw Lawrence. And he walks out there, and he um, puts down these carousels of slides and just starts ripping through his own work. And and she was like, that's it. I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm sold. And, you know, I, I don't know what it's like to have normal breasts than have, you know, nurse. You got and, natural. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know what that's like, but I, I did lose all my hair. Now, when I lost all my hair, I actually thought it was really, really cool because you lost your blow dryer, your brush, your comb, you know, you lost mm-hmm. all that crap. 
And but but people thought it was negative until the Suns played the um, Bulls in the championship playoffs, and you, it was Charles Barkley. Do you remember that playoff? Yeah, it was Sir Charles mm-hmm. Barkley against Michael Jordan, and it was two of the most gorgeous, handsome, bald guys in the world <laughs> um, next to Salvatore. And um, <laughs> and um, for seven games, the whole country was looking at these two gorgeous, bald heads, and the next day it was cool. And people start, you know, the, yeah, the, the comb yeah. over stop. People start shaving it. And I told um, um, I told uh, Charles that in a bar in Scottsdale. And he um, he said he'd been told that several times. That that, that, that series made baldness cool. Um, but so I don't know what it's like to lose something. But I do know that um, when it's fear of the unknown, you've never done it before. And I'm going to risk you mm-hmm. with all my front teeth and my smile and gah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if you had a botched boob job, you can cover that up with clothes and, you know, mm-hmm. no one would even know it. Um, but uh, your teeth, it's right out there. But I, I think showing your own work and I think um, putting it on your website and saying this is my own work done in my office with my own hands I, I think that's the most powerful thing a dentist can do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you, you definitely want to document your cases. And then the other thing is, you know, I'll tell you a little secret, right? So when, you know, as Not dentists. Not your lawyer. Yeah, right. Um, so as dentists, when we're talking to each other, you know, we're looking at each other's teeth, right? So, you know, that's the first thing that we see. But with patients, when they're talking to people, they look at their eyes, right? So if you're going to communicate your uh smile makeover, I think you need to get, you know, the entire face in the shot, right? And have the eyes communicate how happy the patient is. Yeah, I don't, I think, um, um, going back to, uh, beauty, I think the, um, the, the sports illustrated swimsuit edition is far more beautiful than anything in these magazines. Uh, you know, I don't want to see someone's liver and kidney and all that kind of stuff like that. And when you see cosmetic cases of my dentist, it's like a close up of the gums and bleeding. It's like, mm-hmm. dude, back back up yeah like we're yeah. we're so excited for that for the bleeding yeah, and the close-up like, but yeah. you know patients are turned off by that right yeah i mean i mean most dentists when they show a picture if it doesn't have at least one tonsillar stone sticking out of the uh the the, the tonsils you know they they want to reshoot the picture mm-hmm. but and and um but just get an overall uh, feeling so you teach um is it's a two-day hands-on course uh huh. And now you, are those only in New York? Or are they in Phoenix too? Or so it's not in New York actually. So we have a, we're going to be doing it in Phoenix in October, and um, on as Halloween, well, uh, right before. Right before. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to be ready back, back <laughs> with the kids for Halloween, uh, as well as in Nashville in in July. In Nashville. Yeah. That was my, my mom still my mom. I don't know what it is with Nashville. She loves Nashville. Uh-huh. I, I I love I love just sending her there. So. Uh, um, if you were staying in the Opera Land USA, I call the front desk at least four times just to hear the girl answer. Opera Land USA, my help ya. It's like uh, you just hang up and have to call back again and do it like five times. Um, so what? What? It's a two day course. It's a two day course. So it's um, it's a great course whether you have orthodontic experience and you're um doing complex cases or you have no experience. You're not even doing aligners. It's suitable for everybody. It's hands on. So you're gonna learn how to put braces on a uh, type of dont, which you'll be able to master during the course and then do it um, back in the office when you get back. We're going to show you all the techniques that you'll need for your uh, restorative cases. And uh, it's a great value. So the price of the course, it's nineteen ninety five, but for the first 10 people that register, we're going to give an additional $500 off. So it's a really great steal we're trying to get our name out there and yeah. well all, all i can say about it is um dent young people who aren't financially sophisticated always look at balance sheet numbers they mm-hmm. always sit there dentists say well richard let's court is five grand it's like well how much is your first orthodontic case sixty five hundred so if you pay them five grand and do one case, you got your money back. I, I see it all the time with uh, uh, Stephen Buchanan's so like, yeah, he's got a course out there, but it's like two grand. I said, well, how, how many That's molar root great. canals? How price. many molar root canals do you refer a week? Uh, two or three? Okay, there's three grand a week. Um, like, give me cash flow numbers. So that emotion dental course emotion is the 
Orthodontic a, motion. Exactly. Aesthetics in motion, that sort of Aesthetics exactly. in motion. Wow. That is that is a really cool name. I assume your attorney invented that name. <laughs> it was actually Dr. Letardo, yeah. Oh, was it? That is yeah. a really, really cool name. So do you so fear when when you tell some young kid you should go learn implants, they'll be honest with you, I I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to yeah. flap that open. I don't want to hit a nerve, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Um, do you see when when you see kids see this course mm -hmm. and it's um I mean come on um it's it's two grand and their first Invisalign case will be six grand mm -hmm. so I mean, if they um, they're not doing any Invisalign they could take this course for two grand and do one course and get their money back threefold what do you what do you think holds them back is it fear I think potentially fear um I don't think that fear of the lawyers fear of the lawyers yeah I and mean, there's scary people up. look at them yeah. um orthodontics it's not necessarily taught that well in dental school it's kind of a new field so potentially they are well, a, a little that bit That was the afraid. sweetest way I've ever heard anyone say not taught in dental school. No, they're the orthodontic community blocks them from any education and that stuff. Yeah. They, they, I mean, in the requirements, they have to do molar endo, extraction, yeah. fillings, denture, everything. And then there's the orthodontist saying they're like, don't what? touch it. <laughs> what? what are you looking at me for? So, so, so they, so they graduate, yeah. they pay a hundred thousand dollars a year. They come out $400,000 student loans debt. The American dental, um, uh, dental Education Association uh, telling people routinely that the average dental student graduates two hundred eighty-four thousand debt, knowing that in that number, twenty percent of the students had zero debt because their dad's a dentist and they didn't have any debt. So they they average that all down to two eighty-four, which is which it, it's four hundred thousand. Well, if you borrow four hundred thousand dollars of other people's money, you're gonna have to come out and do some four thousand uh, dollar Invisalign cases to pay that back. So. Mm -hmm. What it what, what would be holding them back? So I think like like we mentioned, I think potentially fear fear of the unknown. Um, but orthodontics, when you're doing it just as a short term ortho, you're not doing complex mechanics. It's not that complicated. I think you need to you know have a look and try it. But because I feel that people they do have that that fear you know, when they hear ortho. So with the, with the course, we're going to be offering free mentorship for the first five cases. So if you do have that, um, that fear, you can know that we'll be there to help you. So, and, you and how do they register software. for that course? So you can go on the website, it's emotiondental.com and there's an info form there and emotion. So yeah. TSI.dental, that's your, that's my practice. That's website. your private practice. Mm -hmm. And so if they go to Emotion Dental, mm -hmm. and then uh, you click that. scroll down to the bottom or? Scroll down to the bottom. God, there's that, <laughs> there's that handsome bald guy again. Uh, so, oh, I see. So you got a course coming up July. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's going to be in Nashville, actually. Oh, so yeah. this one is going to be in Nashville. Yeah. And then in Phoenix in October. Yeah, and then there's a contact form in the bottom as well, so you can uh, get in touch with us. And um, and by the way, is this a commercial? Did you pay me money to come on the show? No, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't get the bill? I mailed it a week ago. Um, <laughs> I'll have to. There's uh, no money check. changing hands on stuff, but you did say you're going to give them a promo. The promo. We will, yeah. Yeah, um, but um, my gosh, uh, it's... um. One of the reasons I started um, in 2004, started the online continuing education, because I have to tell you, in in my 32 years of practicing right up the street here, um, looking at a lot of dentists coming out of school all the way to retirement now, if I had to look at all the ones that I thought had the most fun, made the most money, just, just looked like they were having a good time and had to relate it to one variable, it was always hours of CE. Mm-hmm. Because if you, like, you would go to um, an implant course, but the guy sitting next to you is telling you about an ortho course or this or that or that mm -hmm. or that. And and if you if your five best friends are from dental school and they hate dentistry and they hate their wife and they hate their kids and they hate it, if those are your five best friends, you're going to be miserable. Mm -hmm. But what I like the most about um, getting uh, my FAGD, MAG, diplomat and implants, all that stuff had nothing to do with the education it was the people I met who had a fire in their belly exactly. for dentistry. Yeah. And, and then, and now your game, and now instead of people just tearing up your game and telling, ah, oh, dentistry is horrible, it's all, it's all horrible. Now you got people like, oh, dude, you can do better than that. Try this, do that. So mm -hmm. your five best friends are going to drag you up to their level. 
Exactly. Or they're going to drag you down to your level. Exactly. And, and um, so I, I still, um, so that was why in 2004 we started the online CE. And, and the online CE was obviously dentists work with their hands. You need to go to a course. You need to see over the shoulders. But I, I always figured the, the one-hour online CE was just a, um, a really good digital introduction to say, do I really want to fly to Nashville? Um, mm-hmm. And are you having it in Nashville just because that's, where Smiles Direct Club is headquartered. You know what? I didn't know that, actually. (laughs) That's a sacred town for you? Well, you know what? There might be a lot of people that need some some help from Dennis in Nashville now, right? I, I actually think Smiles Direct Club is going to be the best thing ever because yeah. I think um, I think it's um, going to get a it, it's when the when you lower the cost from sixty five hundred to twenty five hundred, mm-hmm. you're going to get a ton of people to enter that, and then you're a cosmetic guru when people go get faster, easier, cheaper cosmetic work. How many times like oh it's perfect yeah mm-hmm. we're all good. Yeah. How many of them are going to come back and say, well, I want you to remove this exactly. and this yeah. and, and And right now, like, say, when I was a baby, um, those big Catholic families would be like the, the most disaster occlusion got ortho. I mean, it was a girl where if you didn't do braces, she'd have to enter the nunnery. No one's going to marry her. No one's going to. Um, and now the size of the family came down to two, so now everybody gets braces. Mm-hmm. And now it's any adult that I see in my practice getting braces, they're already get a, the second time. I mean, every every woman that got divorced um, was looking at Invisalign. Um, so I think that um, if we fast forward um, twenty five years, I think the average um, the average American will have had braces one and a half times. Yeah. And so a low cost entry. I I hope I hope they all get in because it's low cost, mm-hmm. and they start looking at it. It's another phenomena I, I've seen with humans. Um, you either own your own bowling ball and have a bag or you haven't been bowling in 10 years mm-hmm. um right here in arizona we got the four lakes i think of the word scar saguaro cactus apache roosevelt you either have a boat and and go there all the time or you haven't been there when's the last mm-hmm. time you went skiing in one of those four rivers boat lakes skiing or s- s- water skiing water and- i've never been water skiing but my uh i have a friend who's trying to get me to come and, to and when's the last time you've been bowling um, I was, I used to live in a condo and we had a bowling alley. There. Really? So we bowled <laughs> once in the whole five but years so, we lived. So the deal is they, they, they either, they either don't bowl or boat or they own their own ball and boat. And same with their teeth, man. I noticed that it was in 87 when, um, it was 89, the first bleaching came out and it was, um, from Arkansas. It was, um, what the hell was that bleach name? Um, but anyway, it was some, uh, Omni. Omni bleaching, and it was just carbam. I, I remember talking to my pharmacist, Brad, about this, and he goes, dude, that's carbamide peroxide, 10% neutral pH. And then he comes over and gets me a, a bottle of uh, some canker sore medication, and it was the same same exact stuff. But we had to pay $900 for six bottles. And I didn't really care because it's still sold, but what I loved about it is every person that bleached their teeth started a mm-hmm. re- new relationship with their teeth. And they're like, well, what about that? Yeah, and what yeah, about exactly. this? And and with, with Sapien, it's the same thing raising my four boys, now my five grandkids. Getting them interested in it is everything. If if the kid's interested in it, you never have to you never have to worry about anything. And I just think low cost bleaching, um S, uh, smiles direct anything that just gets them like hey don't forget me you know mm-hmm. forget get the mouth and then they're off and running um so so you got two courses in nashville and phoenix mm-hmm. and it was nashville because that was the home of the sd smiles direct club sure and why, why, and why phoenix come on why phoenix because you're, it's you're, a great place to be but you're, you're in peoria well it's actually you know what it's in scottsdale Actually, oh, not in Phoenix, wasn't exactly, good enough but, for Phoenix or or <laughs> but, uh, Peoria. Just all the you know nice resorts are there, but yeah, you you're um, it's pronounced Snotsdale. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> Hootie, Tootieville. So um, so it's going to be a two day course. Um, back to photography. Yeah. Um, since I think um, you know the you, you always meet a kid and they're always like, should I have a laser? And it's like, okay, you just asked me a hundred thousand dollar question. Have you posted one picture of your own work on your own website? And they say no. Um, if you were talking to a young kid and they said, um, okay, I want to start documenting my work. I know you, 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 the circle you run would do it because you guys got to mm-hmm. document your work for the AACD mm-hmm. and all that stuff like that. But if it was a young kid and she said, okay, I see the value in documenting work. Um, what, where would she start? Where, where would she learn? What camera would she get? What would you advise her? So, 
on I did do a course, a 12, uh, 12 lecture course for the AACD website. So going there, she can look there and the have AACD a, website. I, it's not quite up yet. We filmed it and it's not there, but you, you filmed it. To, you filmed it in a uh, Phoenix, right? Yeah. 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 He told me all about it. He's like, mm-hmm. you, yeah, he, uh, well, very, cool. you, very impressed. And yes. I, I'm, I've known that guy forever. So, so it's going to be on the AACD. Yeah. So it's available for members, but you know, I okay. think it definitely makes sense, especially if you're you under know, the uh, online education. So you got the AACD virtual campus, exactly. the dental XP and the restorative nation. So the virtual campus. So the virtual campus. Oh, right there. Yeah. Are you a member? I don't know. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure I am. Uh, this site uses cookies. I love cookies. Oh, there, there's another thing. The yeah. Typical government. They, they pass a law. So why? So now on every website the rest of my life, I have to cl- accept the cookies. Thank you, government. Same, <laughs> the same with HIPAA. But they're not real cookies. <laughs> it's the same, the same thing with HIPAA. Everybody, I mean, HIPAA passes one law and raises the price of health care 10%. Then they pass OSHA. So I just... Why do millennials, every time they say, okay, I accept the cookies, why don't they realize that's the government breaking their leg with a with a sledgehammer again, and then they're going to run back to that guy um, every time everything gets more expensive. Um, but uh, So the virtual campus, um, very, very cool. Um, so are you learning a lot of the uh, implants? I see um, they had the, um, the uh, d- on the virtual deal, they had um, uh, dental XP. Mm-hmm. So is that where so um, for for members they have a a p- partnership with Dental XP where you can go and uh, and learn take courses for free it's included with your membership so and here, let me let me click the, the government event. accept button again yeah, yeah, there, yeah the so thanks Bernie thanks thanks for making me do nine steps to do anything uh, so what is the restorative inter restorative nation is that another so it's another partner um, and that's another great resource that the AC oh by has Leanne Brady for members yeah oh that's right but I thought um, she was with um, um, Panky now she is but that's her she has that website that's also nice you know, really nice good. I, th- I think that is so cool how um, 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 you know we're we're here for the dentist. I don't care if they went to Panky, Rosh, Nas, Spear. I, I, I don't care. Like, like uh, um, you know, people, um, I, I've asked people to come on the show before, and they go, are you sure? Because I, I write for another magazine. It's like, dude, we're both writing for the same person. Uh, we're writing for these kids. Um, what would you say to the class of 2020 who say, um, oh, Howard, he got out in the 80s. He was, he's, he, that was, uh, he, he got out in the right time. But in 2020, getting out of school today with $400,000 student loans, that, that's a bad idea. What would you say to that kid who's second-guessing a doctorate in dental surgery in the year 2020 with so, $400,000? I mean, he's, al- he's already in dental school, so it's too late to do that, to get that money back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, think he, I think they should make the most of their education. Uh, first of all, during dental school, go to your classes and try to study because after you graduate, you're going to be paying to relearn what you missed. Uh, but while the same thing to the cheaters, exactly. We laughed at that all the way through seeing that in dental school cheating was a plague. And you're like, do you not realize you're going to be in your own office? Mm -hmm. You're cheating yourself, right? Yeah. 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 And the other thing is there's so much, uh, free CE for dental students. So a lot of, uh, dental students, they'll want to, if they're going to study, they're going to study the minimum that they need to pass the test. Right. But they need to realize that there's so much dentistry to learn even beyond dental school. And a lot of really good CE is available to them at really low costs because they're a dental student or a new grad. I mean, I think, I don't know if it's still true, but I think on dental town, a lot of the webinars are free for, uh, for students. Is that still the case? Yeah, it's free for um, students, dental students. And um, the, the um, I don't like calling them third world. Um, what do you call it? the the um, developing world? Mm-hmm. I've walked into dental schools in Kathmandu and in Africa, where when the dean found out it was made, they just burst out bawling. I mean, this one, the one in Kathmandu, she had to take a knee wow. because because they were so poor that all their books were twenty years old. Yeah, and um, and then they um, they found out all those um, courses were free on Dental Town, and um, and then um, 
I mean, it's, and then also on Google, you can open up Dental uh, Town, but if your browser is Google in different languages, it converts the whole thing. So they can open that up, Dental Town, in a Google browser to, to, for, to be Polish or uh, mm-hmm. what have you. And, um, um, yeah, it, the I, I um, think that when Steve Jobs stuck the Internet in this phone, I, I would say Neil Armstrong landed on the moon in 69, and humans didn't arrive on Earth until this boy right here, 2007. And this is when Neil individual Armstrong uh, now is opened up, has the entire universe on their deal. It's the biggest game changer ever. I have found, um, I was talking to a woman dentist in Somalia and I would let her do a molar root canal me in Somalia. Mm-hmm. And she watched a thousand YouTube deals and we were talking, I mean, it's just amazing. Before her Android smartphone, she had no, you only knew what your tribal leaders told you, what your local dental school told you. And um, you see all these paradigms coming down um, because of this. And you, so, so I was born in 62. And when I, in 72, when I was 10, my mom bought us our first encyclopedias that were printed in 52. So my first, my first Wikipedia was when I was 10 and it was a 20 year old set of books. Yeah. And now this guy gets born today and he's got 75 million pages of Wikipedia that have been updated. Mm -hmm. So the, so knowledge is zero cost. It's just your motivation and time. Yeah. And it's really changing the world, right? Oh, I, 2007 to 2107 will be the finest century we've ever had. It'll make Neil Armstrong standing on the moon, uh, look like a warm up pitch. Uh, for what the individual is going to do. And uh, so, so um, if she's, um, so again, I, w- I want to go back to my target audience. My, my target audience uh, um, from, send me an email, Howard at dentaltown.com. Tell me who you are, where you're from, what country, leave comments in the, in the YouTube. A quarter of them are still in school and the rest are all under 30 and they're scared. They're $400,000 in debt. And so I want to ask you succinctly, um, if she got out of school, she's four hundred thousand dollars in debt. Um, my gosh, what advice would you give her? Because there's there's the cosmetic people, mm-hmm. there's the implant people, there's the snore guard people, there's the sleep apnea people, there's the endo, there's the silver diamine fluoride pediatric people. I mean, she's kind of standing there thinking, my God, there's ten specialties. There's ten. There's ten ways to go, mm-hmm. but. Four hundred thousand dollars of debt is weighing on her, yeah. um, and what I tell them to do is just first, first go marry correctly, uh, go find uh, preferably someone about 80, 90 years old with ten million dollars, and uh, after they marry, uh-huh. uh, but uh, yeah, that's a but, good. <laughs> so, so what? Um, so what? What advice would you give them? Four hundred thousand dollars in debt with ten different directions to go. Well, I think first of all, you need to figure out which direction you want to go into, and you can. Um, you know, start taking maybe watching free webinars or low low cost webinars and figure out what you're interested in. Also, I would join academies like the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry if you're interested in cosmetics or there's similar ones for all the other different disciplines. And going there, you can meet a lot of people that are going to inspire you and you can figure out if that's where you want to go. And even though, you know, 400,000 is a lot of money, um, in the negative, I would still spend money on CE because as a young dentist, it does cost you a lot less than if you were um, already established and you're also losing production. And when you're young, you can do more and use it more too. So I want to um, ask you a question that um, you're more qualified to answer than me or your husband. That is uh, being a girl versus a boy. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of Women, when I'm um, I'm lecturing in AT still again uh, this I think this month or next month in March, um, a lot of a lot of young girls are very stressed because they're like, um, you know, I want to be that amazing dentist, but I don't want I want to be a bad mom. Mm-hmm. They they they, they want to get an A in mom and an A in dentist, and when they look at that down the when they're looking down the barrel of a double barrel shotgun, and here's an A in mom and an A in um, dentist. They don't know, would it be better to get an A and mom if I was an employee at a big DSO so that at 5 o'clock I can just come home and totally raise my baby? 
or would you say it's better, it's easier to be an AMOM if you own your own place? So if you want to go to the recital tomorrow, you can just cancel your patients. What 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 do you what do you what advice would you give uh, someone struggling with that? Um, I think to be to be honest, I think if you want to be an A and mom, and that's the only thing that you want to be, probably it would be easier to just work for a corporate, and you know not have to worry about the business aspects of dentistry. You know, potentially yes, um, but you know if you do that, are you going to be hating your life and hating your job? Right, because you're not doing something that you're really passionate about. You're just doing that just to get by. So I think it's important to balance it. I think as a professional woman, you definitely need a lot of help. You can't do it alone. Um, and, you know, I'm very lucky because my husband's very supportive you know, he's doing a lot of the. Thanks for raising the bar, buddy. Yeah. Right. My God. Yeah, he's Thanks a, for nothing. He's doing a lot of the admin stuff at the office, so I don't have to worry about that. A Otherwise, lot of admin stuff at admin, the admin, admin, administrative. Oh, admin, yeah. admin. Yeah, okay. sorry. I, I thought you were saying doing men stuff at the yeah, office. Yeah, no. Like, what exactly <laughs> is men stuff at the yeah, office? Yeah, it's the administrative. Um, so you're saying you need a supportive spouse if exactly, you're going to have a kid. Exactly, and I think, you know, having your own office, it's actually, I think it's a lot more difficult than being an associate. Um, you have to be up for the challenge because... It doesn't get easier from it. I think you have to be passionate about being your own boss and being that kind of person where you can't really work under someone else to take that plunge. I want to ask you another question. This one is incredibly uh, sexist and bad and shouldn't be asked. But since it's dentistry uncensored, um, <laughs> some people say that um, um, well, when they look at data where t uh, DSOs, two out of three of their dentists are female. Yeah. So you, you 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 got no matter what theory you have on anything, you got to account for that fact that two out of three people work for DSO. Um, some some people say that um, women are less likely to want to be owner operators. Other people say it's not a woman thing; it's a millennial thing. Mm -hmm. Do you think women or millennials um, are any different in their desire to be owner operators than say all the girls in my class uh, from from then mm -hmm. are? Um, I don't think it has to be specifically, I don't think it's specifically women or millennials. For millennials, um, I think what's really driving their likelihood to be DSOs, first of all, their age and experience and the amount of debt that they have. It's a lot easier for them to first work as an associate, get a job at a DSO, and then own their own office. It's a lot, it's a big commitment to right off the bat as you're just graduating to open your own office. So they want to probably pay off their debt first. So that's why they're going to the DSO. Um, so that's personally why I think millennials are overrepresented there. Um, for women, you know, as we discussed, I think that it has to do with, you know, raising kids. You know, it's easier to be um, working, uh, working for someone else when you're a mom because you don't have to bring work home. You go in, you're done, you just do easy stuff that um, you're very comfortable with. You don't have difficult cases. You don't have to worry about the patient necessarily leaving a bad review or leaving you or anything because it's not really, I guess, well, your office. When, when you... Um when we asked about which area you went into, you, I, I agree how much when you said, um, you know, like when people say to me, well, should I specialize in pediatric dentistry or endo or should I go do this? It's like, dude, it's your life. <laughs> You're going to yeah. do this from 25 to 65 and then die. Why are you looking at me? I mean, if I had to be a pediatric dentist or run the dishwasher at the Waffle House, I'm going to the Waffle House. You know, it's, mm. uh, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not to be a pediatric dentist. Um, it's the same thing with, um, um, do you think it's the same thing with uh, um, photography? We're talking about to, uh, documenting case and all that stuff. Like, I, I never got into that. I always had yeah. my assistants do that. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you think the doctor has to own that and the doctor needs to be a photographer? Or do you think, mm -hmm. uh, back to your course in Nashville mm -hmm. at the SDC headquarters, the Smiles Direct Club headquarters mm -hmm. is where the course is going to be. <laughs> and then in Phoenix, at my house. It's going to be at okay. my house. Are, is that uh, a <laughs> – are you offering that? We'll do it at your house. Yeah. Um, do you do you think they got to um, – own that and do that themselves or do you think you can have your assistant be your photographer so for you know general cases i think you should have the assistant do that it's not necessarily a good 
uh, use of dentist time to take all the photos. However, I think the dentist should know how to take them their, themselves. It's just like, you know, I think with x-rays, you know, you're not, you're not taking x-rays yourself, but um, if in a pinch you need to be able to do that yourself, you have to, anything that you learn, you have to be able to teach someone new because your staff may leave or um, you need to be, you can't be the worst one at that task. Well, that, that's funny, you know, I because I think that, you know, when someone says molar endo, when they say, yeah, I like molar endo, I always think, oh, what's the hardest thing in molar endo? For me, it's actually just finding the MBT. I, I um, mm -hmm. you know, um, that um, when you look at a, a, an extraction and so, well, what if a root tip break off, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but when you pull dentists, and, and I've pulled more dentists, because a lot of people will say, mm -hmm. well, you know, two out of three dentists think that. And I say, oh, wow, I haven't seen that. Can you Can you give me that? They, they never they never have any math. It's always just fell right out of their rear end. But on Dental Town, when you start a thread, the first post can be a pole. Mm -hmm. So there, there's thousands of poles on Dental Town, and we even have a polling button. But whenever you ask um, hundreds and hundreds of dentists, and by the way, in dentistry, um, since you, I mean, when you're trying to predict the next president of the United States, they'll they'll survey a thousand people in a country that has three hundred and thirty one million people. I've been looking at polling data on dentists for thirty two years on my own uh, website, and after two hundred, the horse, the winners of the horses never change. You just fortify the number from one placement to two place. You, you just make it more uh, fortified. But the, the the winners and losers don't take place. But when you ask them what stress you out, it's always it's always the people. It's either the patients or the staff. It's either the patients stress them out, their own staff stresses them out, and um, it's one of those things where. Um, we, we started this deal where I, I don't want some high expectation person coming in wanting. Mm -hmm. So that would stress me out. But yeah. what, what advice would you give to someone listening on the way to work that's stressed out by patients or staff? So, you know, both of these things you can control. Okay. So if your staff stresses you out, they're not doing what you're asking them, then maybe you should look into changing the staff. And same with the patient, you know, say you're uncomfortable with a a very demanding patient that's looking at their tooth. Um, you know, you should, maybe you shouldn't treat that patient. Maybe you should refer that patient somewhere else because it's not, first of all, it's not worth it for your health. And then if you're not comfortable treating that patient, um, what happens if you're, they're not happy with your result too? So you're going to be in a bigger mess than you started with. So you need to take care of the things that stress you out and just change it. I fired my best friend for my practice i remember mm -hmm. one time i was at a staff meeting i had no idea you, you know how some people will treat you different than someone else mm -hmm. uh you know they'll be really nice to you but mean to the other neighbor on the other side or whatever whatever and i had no idea how he just drove my staff insane and blah 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 and i was listening to it and they i said well why didn't you tell me and they go why didn't you tell you he's your he's your drinking buddy and i'm like well that has we don't drink at the dental office, um, <laughs> you know, unless you consider liquor, Listerine and out a beverage. Uh, but so, uh, so I, I, I fired him. Yeah. So that was the right move to do. And, and, you, you, know, to... and you know, he told me when I fired him, he goes, he goes, is this come from Judy? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, she, and then he, he said she was an ass. <laughs> I thought, oh my God. I said, John, you can't do that. You can't, you know, you can't be like yeah. that. But, uh, but yeah, so um, when you do things you don't like to do for money, it never ends well. Yeah. Uh, whether that's alcoholism, substance abuse, wh whatever, it's it's never it's never going to end pretty. Um, I I would um um what is there is there anything that you wanted to talk about today that you were hoping I would bring up and I was uh, didn't remember or too dumb to. If I might just add a, a little, uh, you're thing not about, allowed yeah, to talk. Yeah. You didn't talk for the first hour. <laughs> Don't be chiming up at the very end now. Uh, you know, as a business developer for Marina and her other businesses, um, uh, what I what I noticed is that what everybody needs to be concerned right now about, just like you mentioned about the phone, that most of the millennials and Generation Z, the way they share information right now is through social networks, right? And what if you are a you know an up and coming dentist? How would you get your name out? to potential uh, patients, right, through the social networks. Those are the biggest uh, places where everybody goes to get information nowadays. But um, as we see right now, Facebook is, go is going down. 
Okay, so ex- right? explain it's explain mostly, why you think it's going down. Well, it's it's mostly because uh, will you pull uh, up your Facebook it's page? It's old, online? right? It's mine. quite old. So and it's quite old, and it's quite filled with a lot of garbage and information that is not always correct and true, right? So Facebook kind of lost its way there. That uh, and now there is a lot of junk and a lot of news that is uh, not uh, actually uh, honest news. For example, and so nobody's really trying to get um, people who only started with Facebook are still sticking with it. And I see that new people are moving into Instagram. TikTok is the new way of for, communicating for, for Generation Z tweens. people. And what's interesting, why I'm mentioning all of this, is that the way to communicate through Instagram, for example, is no longer text of any kind. It's images, right? So people are, like to look at pictures. You can, you can get a lot more information much faster through an image than through a, a bunch of text, right? And just connecting it to photographs, for example. A lot of dentists are still advertising their work, just showing the teeth, right? Well, they can be showing the whole patient. And the way, you know, if they are correctly taking the whole, uh, you know, portrait photo of a patient, and the patient really likes that portrait, they'll be sharing it for you. Right, so if they really like the way you have done their work, and you know, have taken the whole picture of their whole face, they'll be posting it on their social media. Right, that's how they will communicate that you are a great dentist. Right, and your name will be getting out. So you have to remember that nowadays you have to employ photography, for example. You have to think about ways to communicate your work through social networks and have other people comment on it and share it. The only way to do it, I think, right now is to show the whole patient, not just the teeth. Does TikTok concern you that, um, well, let's be honest, it's Chinese. Um, a lot of countries are blocking the uh, 5G. Um, do you think that is, a, I, I, and when I say that, I, I was born in America, and I'm the biggest critic on America. I mean, America has been at war from 1776 to 2020. It's been at war every year except for 20 years. Um, when uh, the president, um, you know, um, campaigns on being isolationism, Wilson, one minute after he got to the White House, the the military convinced him, and we're in World War One. After World War Two, it was it was uh, immediately Korea, then Nam, then Iraq. I mean, America. Um, during the whole um, eight years of Obama, we were uh, not declared war on anybody, but our military killed people every day in seven countries. Uh, you know. So, so when I hear things like that, I always think, uh, oh, TikTok's a Chinese. Well, uh, you know, I, I don't even know who's more evil, the Chinese or the United States. Um, th- but does it concern you that TikTok is Chinese? Not really, no, because uh, uh, as long as you communicate, I mean, on our level, on the, I call our level, on the small business, medium-sized business level, I don't think that's very concerning. Because okay. they will not be censoring any kind of photographs, any kind of information that you'll be sharing. And, or, and, and the United States right. censors more people, more information. I mean, look at Biden. Look at Snowman. Right. All these people. I mean, uh, when, when people start thinking the United States is this little virgin Catholic schoolboy nun, it's like, no, you don't even get it, your own country. Um, when when I show you this, uh, um, sorry, I'm going to move this out to show you. Mm-hmm. But right, right now, um, the silent generation is... Uh, you know, people over 75, they're down to 28 million. I'm in the boomer, 73 million, it's going down. Generation Next is 65 million, Millennial 70 million, and Generation Z is 86 million. So succinctly, what I want to ask you, since you're the you're, you're the smartest cosmetic guru I know, uh, definitely in Arizona, um, what does your amazing mind think when you see Millennial, Gen X, baby boomer as far as cosmetic needs is... Um, mm-hmm. Does anything come to mind? I mean, is millennials just Invisalign and boomers more? I mean, what, what, what do you think? So I think, for example, millennials, they're very, um, very much on social media, on Instagram. They're looking at different filters. They're following plastic surgeons. You know, they want fillers. They want Botox at 25. Um, and I think Gen Z is more like um, almost a protest against that. Like Gen Z is very natural. Gen Z is more about you know, loving you the way you are, you know, they have Aww, more ads. I like Gen Z already. <laughs> they have ads um, for, you know, let's say, um, I don't know, Aeropostale or all these brands that are for targeted for those kids uh, where they have, um, you know, models with crooked teeth or with cellulite. So that's more about Gen Z, whereas I think millennials are more about How come when uh, you said Photoshop. cellulite, you were looking at me and not him? <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> so so Gen Z is going to be more all natural. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Which makes a lot of sense because when I think of all natural, I think of an entire you know galaxy being sucked into a black hole. I think of two neutron stars extincting everything in a, a thousand light years. But they really like mm-hmm. that word natural. I don't know if it came from yeah. uh, hepatitis, AIDS, the coronavirus. But anyway, all natural. Mm-hmm. But but millennials, Gen X, yeah, and millennials. Babies. You know, it's like the Kardashians, right? Um, Gen Z is more like uh, Greta Thunberg or. Uh, you know that girl about the climate change? No. So she's a very, uh, girl from uh, Sweden, I think maybe. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Where was she 14, getting in a fight 15? with Trump, an argument uh, with Trump or something? Yeah. yeah. Um, so she's, you know, you know, at her young age, she's becoming, you know, a big name for climate change. So yeah. um, those, I think, are the people representing Gen Z. Yeah. Um, baby boomers, for example, you know, they're... Um, you know, they haven't had fluoride growing up. They have a lot of um, wear and tear on their teeth. So they're going to be the ones coming in for more complex uh, restorative cases, right? You know, millennials, a lot of them have grown up with fluoride. They don't have that many cavities. And I guess, um, you know, Gen X, they're known as the forgotten generation. Gen X? <laughs> uh, I think the- that's what they're famous for. <laughs> so, uh... Uh, the silent Gen X or the uh, the silent generation? What was that joke you uh-huh. said? You said Gen X. Gen X, they're the forgotten generation. Oh, like the silent yeah, generation? Yeah, every time everybody's talking about, you know, on NBC or wherever about all the different uh, generations, they always forget Gen X. Yeah. And then Gen X will uh, post memes on about that. <laughs> Huh. Yeah. I, all I like is that, you know, I publish, I post a lot of stuff about the um, Harvard Business Review where, you know, I like research stuff. And the research stuff um, from Harvard Business Review says that there's um, that this was all, you know, that there's you're you're just picking a, a uh, when they were born. But as far as the research from one to one, they said there's there's none existing. Um, it's just a, the, it's it all has to do with how old they are. Not their generation is special than you know twenty year olds at another time. But um, mm-hmm. anyway, um, I just um, I just think it's funny that. Um, the, the only thing I see in there that's a clash is that the young millennial Gen X dentist, they hate direct mail, phone books, yellow pages, all that stuff. So they're mm-hmm. doing all their in, all their advertising on Instagram and all that. And I said, well, what kind of practice do you have? Is it all like, is it all like Invisalign? No, we, I want to do a lot of implants. I'm pretty sure the implant people still walk out to their post office, yeah. get their valve pack, get their direct mail. So just because you bring to the table your personal bias – of your hatred towards something never can be. I, I, I still think your own yep. self is your, your biggest bias your whole life. You're always filtering everything through your noodle and projecting that onto everyone else. And when I see my friends, um, I can give you a name of um, half dozen practices that collect three to $4 million a year. And it's either a, a dollar bill size ad that says, um, home of the $999 implant. So they all come back from their periodontist, prosthodontist, oral surgeon. These implants are $1,200, $1,400 a piece. And, and that's the one thing you go, you, you could go log on to every periodontist website in Phoenix, Arizona. Not one of them will show their fee. No price transparency, but I can log on to some of these websites. It'll show me the cost of every hotel room possible, or every airplane flight or things like that. And so the, um, um, affordable dentures got to 200 locations mm-hmm. off one trick home of the $99 extraction. Why? Mm-hmm. Because whenever you work out your treatment plan, you know, the extraction are going to be over a hundred, but affordable dentures like, have you ever known anyone who needed one extraction? Who and got dentures? I mean, if you need, how many teeth do you need extracted right now? I don't, I don't think I need oh, any teeth extracted. On, be honest, it's dentistry uncensored. <laughs> But if, if they needed a tooth extracted and thrown away, they yeah. probably need perio, mm-hmm. cavities, gum disease, implants. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. If they need more than three teeth extracted, you know they're a lawyer. Every time they're just a, there's always yeah. going to be a lawyer. I'm just teasing your husband. And uh, <laughs> so the, the bottom line is um, – the bottom line is um, um, there's no price transparency – and when you give someone this big old treatment plan that they're going to need implants and each and, and, and not one person is transparent with their prices, um, document your own work. Say, I did this right here in hunky-dory Phoenix, 
and this implant's $9.99. Because if you ask an economist, um, if you like something, what should you do? And they say, that if you like it, you should lower your price. Why? The winners are always the lowest cost provider. Southwest Airlines does 27% airplane flights, Walmart, Ikea. Um, the lowest cost always wins. And everybody I know that's doing $4 million or more has the lowest price implant. It, it, they keep it at nine ninety nine, and it's on their website right next to the show they're doing it because no one really... Uh, well, mm-hmm. millennials might need one implant, mm-hmm. but boomers don't need one implant. Boomers, if they need one implant, they need at least four. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, but anyway, um, out of time. Um, it was an honor that you drove all the way from the rich and luxurious Peoria... Arizona down here to Phoenix, Arizona to hang out with the normal people. Um, quite an honor watching your career. Uh, best of luck. I love what you're doing uh, for my homies. Uh, thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show. It's such an honor. And no, and how this interview went and are now, mm-hmm. do you think you didn't need to bring your a lawyer who just sat over there like a <laughs> the whole time? Oh, Wait. you invited him. So he, I did invite you. In. Elliot. I appreciate it. Well, uh-huh. we're on Elliot road. I mean, my yes. God, I couldn't ask your husband Elliot been, uh, not to come yeah. on Elliot road, but uh, thank you for coming down. Thank uh, you, will you serve me papers or how will I know? When I've been sued. Uh, No. (laughs) You've been great. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.